All right, this is grade three, module three, lesson 17. And in this lesson, uh, we're going to be looking for patterns in that classic multiplication table. And, uh, you know, the whole nature of mathematics is the study of patterns. So the moment we're looking for patterns, man, we are knee deep in mathematics, and I love it. So let's get going on this. So you have your classic times table chart here, right here. And for the sake of speed here, I'm not going to fill it in in front of you. I'm just going to bring it over here, and there it is. There is our times tables chart. And the whole idea with the times tables chart is uh, there's tons. It makes the patterns totally visible really quickly. Um, as a teacher, I want you to guide your students towards where are the, looking for the odd numbers. Where are the odd numbers? Where are the even numbers? What row has some odds? some evens. And th that's the thing I want you to look for. And man, it's a great pattern. Tons of neat stuff going on. And, and by looking for the patterns of where are the odd numbers, where are the even numbers, and coloring them uh, accordingly, you get to see that, oh, look at that, an odd times an odd is always odd. But then if you're multiplying by evens, you always get an even. It's like even numbers are more powerful than odd numbers because you only need one even number to multiply and suddenly the whole answer becomes even. But odd numbers, when they're multiplied by other odd numbers, the answer is always odd. And the idea would be just look at this pattern. I mean, look for patterns in this table and uh, let the students just have a blast. Uh, let's move on and, and do some more detailed work. So we can use this table to also uh, be useful uh, in terms of explaining things. For example, how do we know that 7 times 6 is, well, first off, we know that 7 times 6 is 42, but how do we know that 7 times 6 is equal to 5 times 6 plus 2 times 6? Well, uh, the idea would be, um, in our chart, we can see, well, here's 7, here's 6, so 7 times 6 gives us 42, all right? Now, we can also see that 5 times 6, and I'm going to do this in green here, 5, five times 6 gives us 30, and 2 times 6 gives us 12. So you can start to see one idea would be a pattern. 2 plus 5 gives us 7, and 12 plus 30 equals 42. That's one way to talk about it. Uh, there might be others, but this might be the, I think, is the most common way that students are going to see the pattern. And then it says, well, how can we use this table to solve something like 4 times 16? Well, one idea would be you can think of six, 4 times 16 4 times 16 as 16 fours. Well, 16 fours can be 8 fours plus another 8 fours. And so there's your 16 fours, and we can see that, well, 8 fours. So 8 times 4, 8 fours gives us 32. So this is equal to 32 plus another 32, and that equals 64. And that means 4 times 16 is also 64. So you can use your times tables chart to answer problems that involve factors that are larger than, like in this case, 8 and 8, because... Uh, 16 is larger than 8. So you can use your times tables chart to answer bigger multiplication problems. All right, so on this problem, we're going to find one of the coolest patterns of them all, especially at third grade, and uh, I love it. So it, the pattern shows up in the times tables chart, but first we're going to show it to you geometrically. So if we look at this first part, it says 1 plus 3 plus 5 and we're supposed to figure that out by adding. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9. And then we can see that 9 is 3 times 3. Well, let's repeat that prat, uh, uh, pattern. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, that equals 16. 
and then 16 is 4 times 4. Now, for some reason, they skipped the next, the next one. Uh, I'm going to squeeze it in, which is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. And if we add those together, and we want to figure out what times what equals that, if we add these together, we get 25, and that's 5 times 5. And then we can continue down here. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. That equals 36. And 36 is 6 times 6. And we could keep going, but let's go back and look at each of these four problems. 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at each of them geometrically. So let's go back to this very first one. 1 plus 3 plus 5. Well, geometrically, that's going to look like this. 1 plus 3 plus 5. And I can write that down. 1 plus 3 plus 5. And we see that the answer is 9. Well, so if we want to keep going, and now we want to look at, let's look at the 16. So 16 is going to be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. So we already have the 1 plus the 3 plus the 5. Now to add the 7, we just bring in the 7. Here's a 7. So now we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. And you can see that that equals 16. 4 times 4 is 16. And then we're going to skip up here to the 25. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. That means we're going to bring in a 9. There's our 9. So now you can see 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. And that is um, a 5 by 5 square. So there's 5 times 5 is 25. So the idea is when you're adding the odd numbers, you're always going to create a square. And the number of odds is the, the side, the length of the side of your square. It's really a beautiful, beautiful pattern. So if we want to see those numbers again, uh, by the way, these numbers are called square numbers. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, and 8 times 8. So these are called the square numbers because in order to make, oh, for example, a 9, 9 looks like 3 by 3. So there's our square, 3 times 3. And if we wanted to make a 16, that would be 4 times 4. And there's our 4 times 4. So these these numbers are called square numbers because in order to make them, you are always going to be able to form some sort of a square. This, was, this 25 would be a 5 by 5 square and a 6 by 6 square, and this would be a 7 by 7 square. And so these are called the square numbers, and they're always on this diagonal. Isn't that kind of a beautiful pattern? And so that concludes this video, grade 3, Module 3, Lesson 17, where we're looking for patterns in that multiplication table.